It's time for another Devo tip on the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verses 1 through 3. At this point in our study of Revelation, it is impossible to place the events of chapter 20 after the events of chapter 19. Why? Well, it's because Satan cannot be prevented from deceiving the nations that have just been slain. That's how Revelation 19 ends, and this, this is just simply illogical. So we have to remember that Revelation is an apocalyptic prophecy. It arranges its images in numbered sets that parallel and intensify as God exonerates the righteous. So let's just take a moment to briefly review the three parallel segments in Revelation. The first segment begins with the appearing of the risen Christ in chapter 1 and ends with his second coming in chapter 11. In this segment, Jesus opens seven seals to allow persecutors to harass his church. The seventh seal is actually unleashing seven trumpets that are designed to warn these persecutors to repent. The seventh trumpet or last trumpet is a bold announcement of Christ's return. The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. So Revelation has to start over again in chapter 12. It does. It starts over and it intensifies its parallelism. The second segment begins with the birth of Jesus. The dragon stood before the woman. She gave birth to a male child, but her child was cut up to God. In the segment, the dragon enlists three helpers then to persecute God's people. The Lord responds by pouring out seven punishing bowls on those who are aligned with these helpers. The second segment ends with Jesus appearing on a white horse to throw Satan's little helpers into the lake of fire. And notice, this is important, that the rest of the world was slain by the sword that came from the mouth of Jesus. That's at the end of chapter 19. And it is the end of history as we know it. So Revelation must start over again in chapter 20. It starts over and escalates its parallelism once again. The third segment begins with an angel seizing the dragon, the ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan, and binding him for a thousand years that he might not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years were ended. This final segment ends with Christ coming to usher in the age to come. We'll get to that. The pattern of parallelism in the book is very clear. Revelation 20 begins with a start over. So let's look at it. John sees an angel coming down from heaven, holding in his hand the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain. And he sees the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him. Did this really happen at the cross? Did Jesus bind Satan at Calvary? Well, it's interesting. The same Greek word for binding occurs repeatedly in the New Testament. What did Jesus mean when he said, If it is by the Spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can someone enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? Then indeed he may plunder his house. Well, evidently, the binding of Satan began during Jesus' earthly ministry. So, did the binding of Satan completely immobilize Satan? No, John says here in Revelation 20, verse 3, that the binding specifically pertains to deceiving the nations. So the bigger question is, 
What does Satan want to deceive the nations into doing? The answer lies in the quick shift in focus to the martyrs in heaven in verse 3. I'm sorry, verse 4. Satan is bound in the sense that he cannot deceive the nations into wiping out the church from the face of the earth, or what's called Armageddon. Satan may persecute God's people through his three helpers, but he cannot dupe the world into executing a Christian holocaust. Thank goodness. How is this comforting? No matter how rough it gets for Christians, there will always be a faithful remnant to testify of Christ's gospel. And that, my friends, is great news.